to another episode of the men of the house podcast and today i have with me amy Linnaeus, and this should be an interesting conversation because i met amy through group coaching at nlu or next level university and so i've interviewed kevin and alan who are the ceo cfo c what probably coo chief sales officer something um they're both c's and o's but either way, I've interviewed both of them. So if you haven't checked those out, go check those out. And we're going to find out where Amy kind of fits into the picture. But she is kind of a um, a co-coach with Kevin and Alan as it relates to group coaching. And that's how I met her. And now I've got a chance to sit down and learn more about her because I only know her through that. So I'm excited. How are you doing today? I'm so good. I'm so excited too. It's a hard act to follow following the guys on a podcast. And yeah, you're right. They're the founders of Next Level University, COO, CFO, CSO, all those things. And uh, I'm so glad you've had them on the show. And I'm excited to see how you piece it all together with the three of us. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's one of those things that I kind of sink deeper and deeper into as I've um, told the story before that you know, I joined the Podcast Connection Network. One of the girls in the Podcast Connection Network had interviewed Kevin. So I listened to that episode and then I started listening to NLU. Then I kind of took a little bit of a break. And then um, once I interviewed him I or matched with him, I was like, oh, I need to kind of catch up on some NLU and started back listening to it. Ended up in group coaching, ended up in business coaching, um, and here we are. So yeah, it's just been kind of a progression, and I've even gotten to the point where I got caught up enough to where I went back to the beginning episodes of NLU, um, and I kind of couple them. I, I sandwich them because sometimes I am guilty of, I, I kind of hoard NLU episodes and then save them and listen to them for several hours, especially if we're traveling or I have a busy day and I feel like I need that motivation. I'll binge um, three to four hours of NLU, but um, yeah. I love it. I love it. And what an awesome thing to do as a podcaster yourself. I mean, because they're over 1800 episodes in for, mm-hmm. so for you to go back and see where they were in the beginning, closer even to where around, like how many episodes are you in, Richard? Uh, 70, I re- dropped 75 on Wednesday. So oh. 76 today. Yeah. Congratulations. That's so Thank exciting. You. I know we're waiting to celebrate the big 100. I remember you saying that December 14th. And so exciting. <laughs> I, I, I Allen it and, uh, reverse engineered, it reverse engineered. Today. Perfect. And so even for the sake of comparison, so that you're not as a podcaster comparing your 75th episode to their 1800 plus, if you go back and see how they were in the beginning, I actually probably guarantee you're further ahead than they are because you have so much powerful influence around you and you're putting so much time and effort into it. So that's always such a positive thing to do. Yeah. Not only that though, is, you know, having listened to the 1800s and going back and listening to the beginning, when I look at mine in my first episode and I look at like, let's say 76 that dropped today, the difference in whether it's audio quality, production quality, now you have video topics, better speaking, comfortability behind the mic, um, all those things, I'm most proud of the progress. And so to be able to kind of go back and look at how they've progressed is also the interesting part because we all know that people who want to start a podcast, we always say, there's no perfect time, just start. You'll figure it out along the way. And, you know, kind of going back to what you said, hey, it's, you know, it's not going to be perfect. So, but there's so much more information out now in terms of getting started and learning than there was seven years ago when Kevin and Alan started that, you know, you can get uh, an accelerated start just by like listening to Podcast Growth University, NLU, um, some of these things, you can pre-plan a bit, but the most important thing is to start. But enough about that. 
Let's get into pre-NLU, Amy. Um, I want to find out a little bit about your background, where you grew up, kind of maybe what your childhood was like, because I feel like some of that is going to play into how how and where you ended up where you are now sitting in front of me in NLU. And maybe what you thought you were going to be doing because um, and how far, a de- you know, so we can see how far of a departure it is from what you thought as a kid to where you are. It's a gap for sure. <laughs> for sure. Where would you like me to start? Uh, chat, where'd you grow up and what, what was your childhood like? Um, I know I grew up, let's say in a small Texas town, um, with asthma as a very sick child. I couldn't go outside very much. So that lent me to, pers- you know, listening to a lot of music and, entertaining myself as an only child indoors most of the time and uh you know which ultimately probably led me into healthcare and fitness and improvement and so is yours similar you know what it kind of is that's so funny and so i i'm not an only child i do have a younger brother and an older half sister who didn't live with us so she was mm-hmm. always this special thing to me but I grew up in a small-ish, bigger than where I live now. I think right now it's exceeded 25,000. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't know numbers. And That's it's, pretty big. Uh, I'm talking about like 400 people. Yeah. Where so up. where I live now is like 2,000, between two and 4,000. Uh-huh. If you extend out to like all the outskirt farms and things and it's perfection, I love it. Yeah. I would go smaller. But bigger, yeah. We hosted the Winter Olympics one time even, I think. So oh, wow. I grew up in Kamloops, BC. So that's yeah so it was a pretty big town but I lived in a rural neighborhood kind of off Mm -hmm. from that so I always grew up kind of outside of the city and I think that stayed with me always I feel way more at home outside of city with less pavement as possible around me than I do as soon as I'm surrounded by cement but I grew up with I mean my parents honestly they're lovely I'm very fortunate. I grew up in a in a very beautiful situation my parents are lovely always doing the best they could with what they had and We grew up in, I would just say, a very middle, a middle situation, not overly abundant, but not in any kind of scarcity. My parents were deep believers in buying things used and with cash and not going into debt and Mm -hmm. those kind of things. I believe I've taken a bit of that with me as well in group coaching. They always joke about my 2004 van, which I would just live in and love forever rather than having vehicle payments. Right. (laughs) right? If it works, it works. It works. It works. It does. And so I've taken some of that with me, but my, my struggle, if anything, growing up was being sick. I was sick. Also, I grew up with a hormonal condition called endometriosis and, and it uh, was just very painful, very uncomfortable, very female related. And it was one of those things that was very hard to get a diagnosis because so many Mm -hmm. doctors, when you go see them as a young woman, it's, Oh, this is normal. You're experiencing what it means to become a woman. These are just normal female problems. And I was like, oh my gosh, if that's true, then like, I want to out here. Like, this is not, this is not great. Hey, thank goodness. Maybe it didn't happen in the modern world. Then you might've been opting for uh, transgender surgery. Not that there's anything wrong with No, I don't think so either, but I might've been fed a different yeah, thing. at and that age, you're very impressionable. And it could have been like, hey, like, uh, instead of finding out the root cause yes. of the issue, you could have taken action that might have been, you know, much more permanent to, you know, finding out a root cause. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. And I deeply believe that we don't, I don't, we don't deeply understand ourselves even until our 20s and things. And so oh, yeah. it's, I have a lot of I do have a lot of opinions about that, but it's, it was a very unfortunate time for me because I felt like I was broken. I felt like there was something wrong with me because I felt very sick. I was in a lot of pain and I had a lot of professional people tell me that it was okay. And so I had to fight really hard for that narrative to shift. And finally, when I finally got a doctor to listen to me, then it was, oh, you're actually going to be in pain for the rest of your life. There is no cure to this. We can give you surgeries. There's lots of drugs. There's lots of hormones you can take, but it's kind of the best we can do. And unfortunately, me not knowing better, I did go into all of that. I've had so many surgeries in my history. I've been on so many different pain medications, hormone medications, to the point where I have to monitor my health so strictly now 
because of those drugs I was on when I was young, right. I have a lot of high risk of other conditions now, which is unfortunate, but it was a long road of all of that. And then I had just, just this moment one day where I was almost just tired of being sick. I know yeah. we feel that all the time, but it hit a new level of, I am on all these drugs. I'm still in pain every day. Every day I still have pain. So what are these even doing for me? And so I decided to just safely get off of everything, start from scratch, get to know my body, get to know what was working and what wasn't right. and just start again. And that was in my early twenties. And it was a really fascinating time because I learned a lot. I learned a lot about finding my own voice. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about just trusting your own intuition. I learned recently that that's self-belief, which we can. Yeah, but together. you know, you almost kind of had it in a way that, you know, I could imagine being a young, you know, developing into a woman and nobody believes you or understands you, but you, you know, you knew what you were feeling and yes. you knew there was an answer you were just waiting for the right person to kind of discover it, believe you, however you want to say that. And so you had to have had a certain level of strong self-belief to even continue, I think, down that path. I think so um, we call it sneaky self-belief when we don't really know what it is. And so, and yeah. I wouldn't have never known that even now. So that's, I mean, now that I'm with NLU and we mm -hmm. teach all this and learn all that, I can look back and see that it was self-belief then. And we can come back and tie that in for sure. But it was, I learned self-advocacy. I learned that, like you said, that person I was looking for, it had to be myself. Yeah. And so I did, I did everything I could. I, I stepped into different modalities of health. I learned, I was also in school myself. I have anatomy and physiology background. So that- okay. Have a health and kinase degree. <laughs> nice, nice. And um, it was, yeah, just a crazy time. And with that, I was able to actually get pregnant with our first son, which was really beautiful. I was told I might never be able to have children. Right. And so that was really exciting, even just going off the drugs and going into just a little of a more empowered state. We were able to do the impossible. And I just kept expanding. I kept expanding and expanding. And what I learned in that journey was everything into what even honestly I'm doing now. It was learning that my sickness, my injuries, all these things were not just one part of me. My body is a whole community of communicating parts. It's not just about my bits or my uterus. It's about right. my liver, my gut, my stress. Like I learned about the holistic inside as well as what that means from outside. So I learned that your external environment affects your internal environment and vice versa. It's it. That's what got me into loving the word holistic was understanding that everything you do affects everything else that you do. So whether you're looking at it from a macro perspective of mm -hmm. health, wealth, life, and quality of life and love, like we do at NLU, or just with your physical health, your internal environment, your external environment, it all affects one another. And I deeply wish that it was talked about more that mm -hmm. way than just, oh, here's this one part of you that we're going to focus on. When in reality, for me to become pain-free, it was about my mental health as much as it was my physical health. It was about cleaning up and being conscious about what was in my external environment as much as what was going on in my internal environment. And with all of that, I was able to become pain-free from a condition I was told that was impossible to do. Did you, when you, when you made that decision to say, I'm going to go off all medications, all this symptomatic type treatment and go for this holistic idea, figure out what's going on with me. Did you, what was the anxiety like? Did you have anxiety about being able to accomplish it? And how did you manage it and deal with it and kind of keep a, a positive outlook of going, I know I can do this. I'm going to figure this out one step at a time. Yeah, I... I'm going to be honest. I am not one who struggles with anxiety. That is so awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I mean, I have really little a superpower. bits. Superpower. Right? I've had little bits, but never where it's been debilitating right. for me. And I think that has come along with 
I mean, I don't, I'm not much of a future pacer, to be honest. Like mm-hmm. Alan has said to teach me a lot about setting long-term goals and things. Right. And so for me, I don't know if my goal was ever to become pain-free. And if I had the anxiety about, will I be able to do this? It was more, what's the next step I can take? Hey, I've been able to like have this result. I had a little win here. What can I step into next? Oh, this really worked. I saw a natural path. This helped me so much. What can I step into next? Oh, I detoxed my environment and now I'm even feeling healthier and more energetic and less pain. What can I step into next? I never had like this desired outcome per se. It was more what is possible? What can I keep stepping into? And so it was learning actually, if anything, to step out of victim mentality. That was my biggest struggle. In the beginning, I was very much a victim. What was me? Why is this happening to me? Right. Listening to everybody else, not being empowered myself. And I But it makes sense because as a female, when you, you know, start developing into a woman and you start menstruation, it's something that is happening to you. You're not in control of it. You're not. You're not. You are in a way of how well it's going to go for you. Right. As far as like, you can set yourself up for success or you can set yourself up for struggle, but we're not taught those things. We're not taught that we can support ourselves. We're not taught that our periods are like our fifth vital sign as women. They tell us if something's wrong or if we're healthy, we're not taught any of those kind of things. And I know you have one daughter, two, three. Oh my goodness. I knew you had three kids and I couldn't. 22, 20 and 10. Oh fabulous fabulous so you've been on the roller coaster of that and Hmm. so we're not taught that there's a lot to it for our overall health that having healthy cycles even sets us up for healthy bone and heart structure later on in life like there's no there's no like even minute or big details in that when we're growing up and so learning all of that is actually what took me into this next stage so I was a registered massage therapist out west And I stepped into a lot of pre and postnatal health and pelvic balancing Mm -hmm. for women. That's where I kind of niche down into. And then with going through my own health journey, I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to talk about this more. And so I ended up working with a company that really helped me as far as their products and things detox my environment and get rid of endocrine disruptors and get rid of fragrances and things that were keeping me sick. And I got to start speaking through their Mm -hmm. platform on their stages about women's health and about holistic women's health. And it expanded from there in a way of I could see that what I would say to the women was very affirming for them, but they were missing a step where they couldn't go home and practice what I had taught them. And so there was a gap there. I could go up on stage and sound good and be good and sound very smart. Oh, here's how your liver is functioning and all of these things. When in reality, that doesn't hit home for a lot of people. I sound good up there. I do. I sound smart. But it's not going to translate home for them. And so then I started bringing in more mental health to it. I started adding in stress reduction and how important that is and giving them tools for that. And even then, I could see that they could do it for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then they would fall off and you're going to start piecing together here, things we teach in group coaching. But it was after that, that I got introduced to NLU and they started speaking about holistic self-improvement. And I was like, oh, holistic is my jam, my, my, my program and my speech, like my talking and public speaking and things. My talk was called holistic healing for your hormones. That's what it progressed into. Wow. And so when I, connected with them. I was like, oh, this could really be something. Even if I just learn from them how I can tr- like translate this into women and help them stay more consistent and feel worthy of healing in this way and believing that they can. And it right. all came down to that. It came down to self-belief, self-worth. And it was powerful to learn that here when I partnered with Kevin and Alan to be able to see that that was this piece, this sustainability piece, the Mm -hmm. belief, the worth, all of that that's underlying in us. We don't automatically, we're not going to say out loud. It doesn't sound logical to be like, oh, I don't think I'm worthy of feeling good. I don't think I'm worthy of being pain-free. I don't believe that it's possible, right? We don't say those things out loud per se, but those are narratives that run in the back of of people's minds and mine as well. And so partnering what I used to do combined with what I have learned and what I get to do now with NLU has been just unbelievable in the next level, if you will. 
<laughs> way that I can help people and step into people's lives. And so that kind of. Did you go to public now. school or were you homeschool? I went to public school, but I homeschool my kids. Yeah. And that's partially why I ask. And how, how did you get into massage therapy and like background of kind of anatomy and physiology is, you know, post high school, was that something you decided in high school or no. where did that come from? No, no. When you talked about what I wanted to do versus what I'm now, the only goal I ever had was to be a mom. Okay. I had, like when, when career day came and they asked you, Oh, what are your goals in your future? What do you want to be when you grow up? I always wrote a mom. And so when I was told that I would maybe not be able to do that, that was a very devastating time for me. I was not career driven at all as a kid. And then finally, when mm. they kind of almost forced it upon me, well, you have to pick something for this project. I said, oh, okay, I want to be a teacher. And so they said, okay, go around, ask the teachers like what they think, get information yeah. about the jobs. Every teacher I asked told me not to do it. Yeah. Not one of them said, oh yeah, this is a great career. You would be excellent at it, Amy. You would love it. Like, here's why I love it. Not one. I did not do well on that project. <laughs> it's amazing though that you didn't be perceptive enough to heed advice in a way because at that age you know you're I don't know how to I don't know if it's being a hard-headed man that other men will tell you don't do it or it's not worth it but we still believe it is and we still do it try to do it go for it and only our seeing is believing is like, no, they were right. It wasn't worth it. Or they're not full of it. Kind of like, yeah. you know, you grow up thinking like your parents, but, you know, I find that interesting because, you know, when people, I think, look for qualities and spouses or whatever, um, I, I don't know, like I never thought about getting married or having children really. And um, when you look at partners and what you know there's so many things what they do how they are you know I knew like for me my long-term thing um, because my parents split when I was like I think 19 or 20 I always had this idea of like um, I want my whoever I marry or if I have children whoever they are they have to be a good wife and a mom regardless of her and I get together or 20 years could go by and we could decide we don't like each other. So that's kind of irrelevant, but you know, that's my wife. You know, I married her cause she's a, she's a great wife, great mom. Um, you know, she has all these other qualities, but like, to me, that was an important thing. And so I definitely find it interesting that that was kind of, uh, what you sought out to be. That was, something you strive for. And I had mentioned it not too long ago. I don't know what episode it was, but I had an episode where I talked about, like, I never focused on, um, I always focused on career. I never focused on relationship because I was always of this mindset that regardless if I have a wife and kids from a very young age, I was very intuitive to know maybe being sick that everything can be gone instantly. And so I always need to be satisfied and fulfilled with myself. And so what I was to do for my life, whether you want to call it a career, a purpose, whatever, had to be front and center for me, had to be the focal point. And I just figured all these other things would happen. So that wasn't kind of something I sought out. It was actually the episode that released today with a family and marriage counselor nice. that we talked about this. And you know, because she talked about men who were in their 30s who were just like, they were so career focused. They never got, they're not married or anything. And they're like, oh, I just thought it would happen. Why has it not happened at 35? And, you know, for me, I could understand. I mean, you know, it happened for me much later, but, you know, I, I definitely understand that. But I find it interesting that your goal was kind of like, hey, I want to be a mom. Um but it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. and... Intention is very powerful. I was never one for like goal yeah. setting and things, but my intention, I wanted to be married and having kids like by the age of 25, like I had that kind of mm -hmm. dream and goal. And because that was my dream and goal, I do believe that that's why it happened. 
My first son was born when I was yeah. 25. Oh, wow. And we well, were married know, that year too. The crazy thing is though, is, and, and what I find interesting is with that kind of goal in mind, it, I feel like I could see where somewhere in there that it only makes sense that this kind of self-awareness mm. is important to you. And then that working on inner development, whether it was to just be pain-free, it really is kind of this chain reaction of you're working on that, that requires self-awareness, but it bleeds in to kind of every other area of your life. And like with the homeschool thing, you know, I've been having these conversations with um, co-regulation, self-regulation, children, what they're teaching in school, homeschool versus uh, public schools. And, you know, if, if parents aren't aware of these kinds of things and understand how important some of these self-development skills are for their kids in the future, and they're not teaching to them at home, and then they go to public school, and none of this stuff is being taught in public school. And what if public school is the only stable environment kids have, or the only stable uh, parenting or adult figure they have in their life is at school, and they don't learn any of these things. They only learn things that are required to pass a state test. You know, they're not learning the crux of kind of what it means, I think, to be human or the important things of humanities, which is funny because I studied that. And one guy I interviewed was like, yes, studying humanities, how to be human. That's the other part of outside of science and math and stuff that we yeah. learn, you know, and it's a it's another important part. But yeah, and, and so I find it like it, it, I can see kind of the picture of Amy coming to fruition of kind of that background and, you know, what you wanted to do mm -hmm. and kind I of think where it's part led. of me wanted to be an educator, which I became in my own way. Well, I yeah, because otherwise you wouldn't have done the project and asked about it, but you're doing it on your terms. I am. So me going and speaking on stages and educating women on their health and those kind of things. And now doing what I do, I am, I am educating. I'm educating about people, about holistic self-improvement and how they can be great humans and dive mm -hmm. into what success means to them, passion, purpose, fulfillment, what their own version of peace, fulfillment means. And so it is, a, I do believe at heart, I am an educator, but I love what you said. So there are two kinds of people I believe is the people who, when someone says you can't do something, they go do it yeah. to either prove that person wrong or prove it to themselves, or they mm -hmm. have to learn the lesson themselves. Yeah. I have always been blessed with this ability to be like, oh, I don't need to learn that lesson myself. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I believe you. I, I don't do it. Like, I don't think we should take advice from people we wouldn't trade places with for one. And at that point, none of these teachers I would have traded places with, they were miserable. Right. And I deeply believe I dodged a bullet not becoming a teacher because I would not survive as a teacher in the way schools are now yeah. at all. I would have quit a long time ago, for sure. Like I homeschool my kids. It's not, they don't go yeah. well together, right? And and so I do, I, I, I'm I very fortunate in that. But all of this taught me too, that I really need to lean into what I can control versus what I can't. I think that really helps us get out of that victim mentality and into more of a empowered state of, okay, there are things that I can't control, but what can I when we're in these big overwhelming scenarios, right? And learning that I could control a lot more of my health journey than I was initially empowered to do was a big part of that. Yeah. So how'd you get into massage therapy? Like, oh yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't go back to school right away. Mm -hmm. I traveled, I tried different jobs. My, my parents as wonderful as they are, they're very much in the mindset of like, just do what is like minimal, not minimal in a negative way, but like, what is sustainable? Don't overstretch. Don't do too right. little, but don't do too much. Right. It was very much that kind of neutral zone. And they were like, what if you just, what if you became a hairdresser? Everyone needs their hair cut. 
No one's right. ever not going to be a hairdresser. And if you're a hairdresser out there, all the power to you. I'm not trying to make that wrong. It wasn't for me. Right. It wasn't. I, I didn't want that. And it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. And I didn't want to be a teacher anymore because it sounded horrendous. I loved the idea of working with people. I loved the idea in working in health. I did mm -hmm. not want to become a nurse. I was not right. built for that whatsoever. And I think just the trauma I had been through, we didn't get into any of the trauma in the medical system I had been through, but it is extensive. They've almost killed me. I've almost died. It's not a pretty history with me in the medical system. I don't have a good, I don't have a lot of good things to say about it, mm. to be honest. And so I had this thing if I could go in there and try and make it better. And then I was like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> No, but, so, but I think that's important to understand because I uh, I don't have great things to say about the medical system, but I participated in it a lot, both as a mm -hmm. patient and as a um, employee. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of like school systems, um, they're broken. They're broken. The systems yeah. are broken. The system itself is broken. That's right. It's not the people. The people go in wanting to do good, wanting to help people. Like that's the initial reason why people become nurses, doctors, practitioners. And I looked into it and I knew because I wanted to become a mom, mm -hmm. I knew that 10 plus years of schooling was not going to make that reality for me as early as I wanted it to as well. And so then I discovered massage therapy and in BC, it's different. It's different in all the States down in the U S mm -hmm. you guys all have different regulations, but in BC, it is a like intensive two and a half years, no summer break five days a week. Like it's an intensive program and you have to be regulated by the board. You have to go through government exams mm -hmm. afterwards and things. And so it, it's, it's quite the, quite the thing to become a part of. And I got to learn all about anatomy and physiology, which I already right. loved. It was incredible. I enjoyed it a lot. And then when I was able to have a practice outside of that, I instantly was drawn to helping women and doing a lot of, like I said, pre and postnatal health, a lot right. of I, all the continuing education I did, I did around like joint manipulation in the pelvis and things like I loved all of that. But I quickly learned as I was stepping into other things that I can help one patient on the table an hour or I can speak to a room of hundreds of people and have them at least learn something about themselves. And so that became way more sexy very yeah, quickly. Yeah. And then I got a back injury that almost made it impossible for me to practice as well. So those two things came in simultaneously and it was like the universe being like, let's give this up. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard. It was hard for me to give up those three little letters behind my name that made me feel very smart, made me feel like I had accomplished something. And well, you you still accomplished it, whether the letters are there or not. And I had to tell myself that, that I still have all the information. I'm still the amount that I learned there. I still I still use constantly. Yeah, I'm still I mean, and when my dad throws his back out, I'm over there, you know, doing my thing. But so it still is very relevant. But it also taught me a lot about working with people. Yeah, well, people. the thing about it is, is like, I have a master's that I don't use in healthcare administration. But, That's right. you know, so you go like, where's the value in the education? Well, the value is, is that, you know, achieving it taught me what I was capable of because of everything that was going on while I was achieving it the 18 months or 15 months of hell and being a new manager with a one-year-old and relocating your family and getting up at five in the morning spending weekends away you know managing that teaches you hey if you grind it for 15 to 18 months something will happen Mm -hmm, definitely. And I knew that I could have a flexible schedule. I've always been about a flexible schedule. Going I'm through. only learning that that's what I crave now. Yeah, that, that it's about the, the, the nine to five thing is it's too constricting. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are built for it. Some of us love the routine. They love being mm -hmm. able to do their hours and then leave and not have to think about it and those kind of things. And again, all the power to you. If that is you, that's so good to know about yourself, lean into it. I was always the opposite. I never did well in an environment of like, these are your hours. You have to be here. And I knew yeah. to be the mom I wanted to be, I knew I needed my own schedule. Well, I knew see, I that's... needed to take pay 
patience when I wanted to versus when I didn't yeah. want to. So that's funny you say that. So there's a couple of things where, where, you know, I think that for me, similarly, um, you know, I thought I would go into management, become a director, and then maybe work my way to VP. And by the time my daughter was 18 and going to college, I would have the flexibility to work from home, be where I needed mostly meetings. Cause a lot of VPs, you know, they'll work like Monday through Thursday. They may live in another state and fly home for the weekend and, um, getting laid off, you know, it was such a blessing because it was kind of this thing of going, Hey, the person you want to be that you think you need to be 10 years from now, now is the time to be the person. Yeah. You no, know, like we're not promised 10 years from now. That mm -hmm. could never happen. Um, so it was kind of about taking advantage of that and saying, oh, this is what the freedom means. This is the blessing of being laid off and doing multiple other things. But kind of like you said, too, one thing that really resonated with me was that, you know, as a podcaster, telling your story and the other 70 something stories I've told as well as my own, you, I can have way more of an impact doing this than I ever could managing two clinics and the people I touch there on the daily basis. And so, you know, I had to learn that my identity wasn't attached to the one job I had in healthcare for 12 years. Um, that my identity is really, I'm a kind, caring and compassionate person who loves to serve others, but how I, you know, choose to express it and do that caring just changes shape. It was mm -hmm. healthcare for 12 years. Um, Uber Eats, I considered delivering people their food, convenience, making their life better. If it's 50 pound bags of dog food that they don't want to carry and I'm improving your life, I consider that service. Um, and podcasting, you know, it, it's just taking a different form and you know, I had somebody ask me on a podcast, well, what if you couldn't podcast anymore? Well, I've come to understand that I'm a kind, caring, compassionate person who wants to serve. And if I can no longer serve podcasting, then I'll find another way to serve, Right. you know, and I won't be so broken because, mm -hmm. you know, that was the first job I was ever laid off from was four years ago or fired from, you know, whatever it was during the pandemic. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. You know, so yeah, very, very similar in, in that, you know, I love what you said about being able to help more women, but there was some truth to, yeah, it sounds sexy, but how do you get people to enact it? And I understand kind of that's where habit tracking yeah. and all that kind of stuff and breaking it down into um, manageable steps that get you towards a goal. But how did you discover NLU? feeling totally drained it's been a long week dude i get it i'm there too man but if you're searching for ways to manage the stress and find just a little bit more just a little bit more peace not a whole lot you just need a little bit then i'm telling you man the podcast connection network is here for you we've got amazing shows on mental health mindfulness and just all kinds of ways to live a healthier and a happier life who wouldn't want that dude look check out all the other shows including the nonchalant perfectionist after this episode tell you what the link is in the description below let's get back to the show hmm good question so <laughs> i was actually heading up like northern canada it was quite the road trip it was beautiful we got to see the northern lights and everything it was a very long road trip i got asked to come speak at a women's event and uh on the way, one of the women I was traveling with was deeply falling into breath work mm -hmm. and that kind of modality of helping people. And she was obsessed with breath work. And one of the biggest names in breath work in the world right now is Sam Skelly, Samantha Skelly. And Kevin and Alan had her on okay. their podcast and she wanted to t share Sam Skelly with us. She's like, but she was on this podcast with these two guys. It was awesome. I want to share it with you. And so we listened to it and I fell in love with Kevin and Alan. Yeah. I absolutely adored them. I was like, oh, I could, I could listen to these two. And so I did, I kept listening. And then my friend and I at the time decided we could have a podcast. So I used to have a podcast. Yeah. 
And we reached out to Kevin. It was like, hey, we want to have a podcast. What do we do, right? Kevin's the podcast man. And so they produced our podcast for us and helped us with that. And she ended up falling away and I kept it going a little while by myself. And then my family and I moved across the country. Oh, wow. And so now we live in Ontario. And I kept telling myself, well, I'm going to pick up the podcast. I'll pick it up you know, when, when we get a house and when we yeah. do all of these things. And I was also running my first, I had my own kind of version of group coaching at that point. I had, mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Peaceful Period Project. I was helping women go through all the information and all the things we, it was wonderful. And I had launched that right when we got here. And so I was just doing all these other things. And I was very connected with Alan was helping me and we were doing relationship talks with Alan right. and Amelia. And so I was just very connected within the community. I loved going to their free things. And then one day Alan hopped on a call with me. Uh, I had just done a, a speech of some sort. And he's like, so you're a public speaker. I've seen your stuff. You're really good. Like, would you ever be interested in coming and working with us and like starting off, let's say as our MC for yeah. our live events? I said, oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. And he's like, okay, what about like being on the team and helping me with trainings and helping me speak into people's lives and all these things? And I said, absolutely. So when I came on the team, I was the MC. We did the live event. First one I went to was a couple of years ago. And uh, then I helped Alan run the training program and mm -hmm. uh, connected him with people. And we did trainings for people and and it was, it expanded from there. I've been in lots of different departments, but now I am, you know, a one-on-one -on -one coach through NLU. Mm -hmm. I do group coaching, as you know, I help them with group coaching and do my mm -hmm. own sessions with the groups as well. And I get to still be their MC and we still yeah. do lots of wonderful things together, but it has just helped me expand so much. Like it's, it's you, you're a part of the community. You know how expansive it is. It's such a wonderful place of growth, of acceptance, of truth, of yeah powerful frameworks that help you stay consistent and give you the permission to do things small and sustainably versus saying like, no, go for it. Do this crazy ass thing that you're never going to be able to sustain. It's, it's not like that. It's so rooted in truth. And I was always one to communicate that to women in my program. It was do not take all of this on at once. I right. taught them so much in nine weeks just like you guys learn in group coaching, you learn so much. It's not about taking it all on at once. It's like, what spoke to you the most? Was it the stress reduction? Was it the herbs and teas you can start using? Like what felt more sustainable to you in the beginning? And so as soon as I partnered with Kevin and Alan and saw that that was a big part of what they were preaching to and how we could come together, the three of us, and really expand on that has just been so powerful. Yeah, um, it's like, yeah, yeah. I think you know, it's it it's certainly one of the things that's changed my life for sure. Like the engagement part of it. I would say it's probably the one place, whether it be Facebook, WhatsApp, everywhere through group coaching, that I remain engaged the most. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of weird because it's almost like a vortex that sucks you in, like in a way that, and, and especially if you're into getting better, self-development, self-improvement, which I am because, you know, for me, it was like, hey, I was in a really low spot two years ago and kind of getting sober, starting a podcast, trying to become a better human, figuring out all this stuff about myself in picking up all these pieces you you know because you're tired of feeling a certain way looking a certain way that is kind of like a self-improvement but the sustainability piece is hard and I was able to like let's say get through you know maybe eight or nine months solo with different pieces of motivation coming along the way and then kind of once I got back with the NLU and started with the consistency on the podcast, you know, it, it's one of those things that really keeps me part of my accountability, part of me um, that keeps you pushing forward, keep going, you know, whether it's through posts, whether it's through the private account, you know, the, the Facebook page, all those things. But yeah, they do have a unique way of taking something that feels overwhelming 
in big things. And, you know, Alan has that way of breaking it down into small things. And I fancy myself in terms of project management and leadership of having that same ability in terms of going, I get overwhelmed very easily. So I think mm -hmm. it's more out of necessity. And I go, okay, 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 this is too much. Let's find the first things first and let's start there. But Alan is much more detailed in his ability because he has that engineering and I'm more of a humanities person. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that ability to go, hey, it doesn't have to be so overwhelming. An elephant, one bite at a time, do these things daily and trust the process because I'd kind of already known that through exercise and losing weight that, hey, you just got to keep doing it. And eventually the results will show up, maybe not as fast as you want, but also, you know, they're very realistic. And I think that's one of the reasons I went with them with, you know, group coaching. And then of course, one-on-one -on -one was that, you know, for the listeners who don't know, they both done fitness competition. So they're very well versed in fitness and getting you to look a certain way, if that's what you want, but they're also very um, cerebral in terms of business and how they approach things and Alan's very smart and you know so it's kind of that perfect combination because you get a lot of people especially when you podcast and you talk about mm -hmm. these things people solicit you all the time they want to grow your channel improve you with this and then you have people who are in the self-improvement who are like you know I can get you to look and be toxic masculine like me and all this <laughs> And I'm not really into that at 48. I'm more uh, uh, realistic. You know, I want to be fit um, because I want to live a long life for my mm -hmm. daughter. But, you know, with them, I feel like they're kind of that perfect combination of if you want to look like a gym bro, they can help you. But also if you want to start a business, they can help you. If you want to mm -hmm. start a podcast, they can help you. Or if you have something similar to what you did, um, they can grow that and help you step into probably even more than you ever thought. And, you know, one thing I remember on one of the episodes with um, when they were talking about one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching at the end, Kevin mentioned about Alan, he goes, hey, just, you will get something. If you work <laughs> with Alan, it may not be exactly like what you thought you were working on, but you're going to get something you will yeah, not maybe walk not be through. what you wanted, but it's going to definitely be something you need. Yes. Yeah, and I love it's that. Very intuitive that way. And I love, that's why I love the holistic aspect of it. It is it's quality of life, your love life, your health and your wealth. It's, it's a platform that is dedicated to being able to help you dive into whatever your version of success is and do it in a sustainable, consistent and successful way. And between the three of us, between Kevin Allen and myself, I deeply believe if not all of us, one of us can help you do that. When I first came on the team, it was really funny. Alan and Kevin were discovering that actually a majority of their audience were heart-driven women. Yeah. It was so funny. They were really struggling to wrap their head around that. And so they kept picking my brain as to why that is. Why are we attracting so many just lovely, dedicated, wanting to get better women? I said, because you guys give a lot of permission. And they couldn't. Like they, I had to really break that down for them. I said, you give a lot of permission to want more, to do it in a very sustainable and aligned way. You're not pressuring your version of success onto other people. You're just here in an integrous way yeah. to serve. I said, you are an example of two healthy masculines, which women crave all the time. We crave around be being around healthy masculine energy. That's another part. Whether women know that's why they're there or not, it's an underlying emotional safety thing. We feel emotionally safe around emotionally safe men, right? That's My the feminine thing. feminine energy feels safe around Kevin and Alan. That's right. And, <laughs> but also they're examples of yeah. healthy non-toxic men and when who men who want that like yourself are yeah. drawn into that especially someone like you you value their integrity I've i'm heard 48 you speak on that and so i've been around plenty of bro i've been around all kinds of people from the military yeah. to the kitchens to mma gyms That's where right. i've worked the level one trauma centers i've seen the best smartest surgeons some who are nice guys and some who are just complete assholes yeah that's with right. egos you know so i know what I look for 
in a man or the kind of men I want to be around. Yeah. And be influenced by, yeah. I think that's a really powerful and humble trait to have. Well, not even that at 48 to go, how can two 35 year olds influence and mentor me? That's right. That's right. That takes humility. That's why humility is such a powerful thing is if you have humility, you can learn from people regardless of their yeah. age or if they have more than you, or if it's more, does this person align with me? They in line with you. You've said this before because of their integrity, they've grown their podcast, their coaching, everything through integrous means. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we wanted to Which make was my money, money hang up. Yeah. Right. I believe that people with money always got it through not being not having not any integrity. integrous means that's right if we wanted to make more money group coaching would be way more expensive you're yeah. getting three high level coaches for less than 25 dollars a week in yeah. group coaching because we are here like you said about yourself you want to serve others that's our way of doing that we're so dedicated to seeing the world win and become better you talked about how earlier about how parents like it, it starts with parents with their children right? right to be healed parents is how you are going to have healthy emotionally intelligent healed children we can't put that on our kids if we're not going to do it ourselves there's no way there's no way so healed adults are what is going to raise a well, I think healed I generation. think we're at a place in time for whatever reason you know, as a Gen X, I feel it, that we're here to break something, whatever this curse is, and we're shifting from this industrial revolution, money and things world to mental health, um, fulfillment kind yes. of world. And we've been in this shift. And I think Alan and Kevin with Next Level University probably kind of got ahead of it in a way. But where they are it's almost like they're in a place where it's healthy enough to nurture some of the shifts that are happening in the world because i think people are really becoming attuned to the fact that um and especially with the pandemic it showed that that not everybody is designed for corporate and that corporate is not the only thing and that you could be, and that it is for some people, and they like that routine and structure, but then you have entrepreneurs who are um, like Kevin and Alan, who take this chance and do their own thing. And then you have somebody like you who have this hybrid model um, of having your own thing and joining with two entrepreneurs and kind of getting the best of both worlds. And, you know, the world is also in this place where people are relocating from, you know, Hollywood to Austin, Texas, the comedy yep. scene's becoming bigger and people don't have to be isolated. They can finally live where they want to live and kind of do things on their own terms and have that freedom, that choice, because I believe, you know, they're synonymous. People want more choice mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's most alluring to me is if I need to take off, if I need to reschedule a podcast or whatever, I can be where I need to be for the people I need to be there for when I need to be there because of the freedom I have. And sure, it's, you know, money fluctuates more. It's less stable than it was nine to five in corporate. But the fulfillment is 10 times tenfold. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of one of the most important things to me. But I think How? everyone's chasing fulfillment, whether yeah. they know it or not. You can be fulfilled in a nine to five. You don't have to be fulfilled the way everyone. I I really struggle when people say everyone should be an entrepreneur. I don't think that's true. No, I don't think that's true. I even personally, I was an entrepreneur. I ran my own program, public speaker, had my own group coaching, all of these things. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. I love being an intrapreneur with yeah. Kevin and Alan. I am not there as their employee. I help their mission. I am a pivotal part of their mission. I am there. I also consult. Like they take my advice right. and things, but they also pour into me just as much, if not more. Like if you can still find fulfillment in a nine to five, if that's what feels good to you and you can still expand. Self-improvement is not just for entrepreneurs. You can want to have more fulfillment and still want to have your regular job for lack of a better term. And I yeah. don't say that in a negative way. 
you can, it's still a struggle if you have a nine to five to find fulfillment because you still have to learn to harmonize, not balance. I hate the word balance. What a load of crap to harmonize your family life, your spouse, your health, all of these things. Everyone, regardless of what kind of money, wealth journey you are on, job journey you are on, still would love to have more love, more health, more fulfillment, all of these things. And that's why I love NLU because it is for people like that as well. Yeah, I agree. Because some people they have, maybe their passion is woodworking and they go to the flea market every Saturday and do stuff or restoring cars Mm -hmm. and their nine to five provides that. But, you know, I think And that's where I think kind of fulfillment and awareness, self-awareness is kind of one of these key things that if you understand that and you understand that, hey, this is the part of my life that's fulfilling and the nine to five provides this, then you're able to make sense of it. And I think you're able to accept and operate within that set of parameters for yourself and find that quote unquote happiness, which I think is really kind of a sense of fulfillment, it but is. you have to be self-aware. Fulfillment is a key part of happiness. Yeah. Right. You guys learn that in, in group coaching. Happiness is a combination of joy, pleasure, and fulfillment. We can't have just one. We need joy. We need to be out there living in present joyful moments. We need to have pleasure, things that bring us mm-hmm. that, you know, superficial for lack of a better term moment. I mean, vice is also in there. So people who are just constantly living in a pleasured center paradigm are not going to have as fulfilling of a life unless they can flow in and out of that, right? There's some terrible vices and pleasure, but there's also, you know, a pint of ice cream and Netflix with my family. Like that's pleasurable. If I did it all the time, would it be? Absolutely not. That's why fulfillment is there. But I think people get misconstrued with what fulfillment is. I think they think it means life is easy all the time. Yeah. When yeah. fulfillment is actually sometimes making the hard choice, doing the hard thing now so you can have more joy later. Less you decide you later. deciding to get off all the stuff and pursue that is that you know in it's choosing the harder road. Yeah. It is. I know people in the chronic illness community that will always be there. They will. And that's sad and hard for me to say, but it is because they have made that their identity. They don't want to take the hard steps. They would rather just stay in there. I am sick. I will always be sick. People tell me I'm always going to be sick. And they stay in this victim space that I can empathize because I was there. I can. And I see you so deeply in that if that's where you're at. All I can say to you is that there are small steps that build out of that. It's going to be hard because I remember I remember as a kid, distinctly remember driving past the front of a clinic seeing somebody in a wheelchair and seeing sick people and going no matter how sick they are let's you could call it how much of a victim you are Mm -hmm. they still grasp for life they still want to live they don't know what's on the other side but apparently this state of being is is enough they wanted enough to continue reaching for it and i think understanding that and seeing that was where that kind of desire to want to help and i don't know what kind of help i was wanting to offer as a little kid seeing past that whether it was to serve or whatever but i i think as it goes older uh, as it get as i get older and i become to understand more about this you know maybe something as simple as this conversation of going, you know, you don't have to live in that and that you can choose to figure out fulfillment, even within that space. You know I mean? There's people who are bound to wheelchairs for life who compete in the Paralympics and they find fulfillment through that and inspiring others and giving speeches and doing all these They're out there doing badass things because they've accepted what they can't control and are doubling down on what they can. So how has your life changed since joining NLU and kind of mm-hmm. what is what are some things that have happened that you never would have guessed in a million years had you not said Yeah, I mean, yes I, I hang out with a podcast. couple of yeah, I hang out with a couple of bodybuilder bros on the regular, you know, no. 
<laughs> it's so funny because they do have that, right? They both yes. have personal training in their background and, and fitness is very important to them, but they're also just as big a nerds when it comes to love and being the best men they can be for their women and all of these things. Right. But I have, I have stepped into my next level version of fulfillment. They have given me the platform, the tools, the permission, the, the permission so much. Yes. Thank you to, to shine in a space that wasn't my own. And that has healed a lot in me because I have been in a lot of different places where as soon as I started to shine too much, it became too much for people. And I got dismissed very easily. They're so self-aware though. I, I was thinking that's another thing I respect about them is they that are. they're able to allow you to do that. And it's only because they're self-aware and humble enough to know, you know, yeah. like Alan always says that I too much, too arrogant people feel. And so, yeah, he can do that for you, yeah. which the is more beneficial for them. The more it, they And that's how they see it. The better <laughs> I get, the better NLU gets. Right. right. And they see it that way. It's a more Value abundant add. thinking. It's so abundant versus versus scarce. Like, Amy, don't like, no, don't do that. They could easily, as the two main, obviously front facing people, they are the faces of this company. They right. have a lot of background people that make it run and they're all amazing. The team is amazing and they give them so much credit. They know that their background people are the people that keep them going. And we do. We just have such an incredible team. But for them to allow someone like me to come in and start being becoming the third face of their company of their business right it's what a gift for me honestly never in and a million for, years you thought no no i just kind of thought i'd help you yeah. know i'd be their mc which is fun and and those kind of things but yeah no me like i'm their facebook person now it's i'm the one who's posting in there every day yeah. i go on podcasts now on behalf of nlu we just to be able to step into, I don't know, this platform that they have given me and they want me to grow and expand even like, con like without any permission, they like, don't, they don't make me feel like I need their permission right. to go and do things so like, oh yeah, no, go do, go do, go do, go shine, go be, go be awesome. Like, just go, go be great. Like, we're just so grateful you're here. And the more you shine, the more you grow, the more you expand the more they benefit because not only do they get to learn about that from me, but they also know that I'm going to pour that right back into this community. Right. And I love that. It has been such like that has grown so much of my self-belief in the background, my self-worth in the background, my habit of playing small is diminishing by the day it is. Yeah. It's, it's been such an expansive experience. That's what I was going to ask you is so how, you know, I could, I could, uh, I could feel the excitement mm -hmm. of this bleed through the microphone and the screen. And, um, hopefully the audience could hear it through their ears, but, you know, given that, what has it done for the other areas of your life? Mm, everything, because everything affects everything else. When you're feeling fulfilled in whatever it is that is your wealth bucket. So yes, this is my wealth bucket because this is what I do for a living now, right. but it's also my passion, my purpose, they're combined. I'm so grateful to say that those things, me speaking into other people's lives, coaching people, working with this business is like, it's like my thing. I'm so excited about it and I appreciate it so much, but it has like with that, it has expanded me into being this the best version of myself I have ever been. This is my favorite version of myself currently. And I love that that's just going to keep growing because we never actually yeah. arrive, right? We can always expand and grow and do more. And so that has, I mean, it's enhanced my ability to parent. Even the things I learned through NLU, how I'm able to trickle that down into my children is so powerful. My relationship, my marriage is the best it's ever been because we understand each other's core values, but we also extend, understand each other's core wounds now to a deep level. Right. And so when I poke his core wound, I know it now. And instead of me getting defensive or anything like that and vice versa, we can be like, oh, you're reacting this way because this is your core wound and all these things. We can talk it out. It's it's fantastic. And same you're on the fitness journey with yeah. everyone like me let's see i've i've for sure lost 25 pounds 
yeah. just from being in this realm, from Alan pouring belief into me that my body isn't this broken piece of garbage still, even though I feel better, I was always playing scarce because my inflammation would still kick up. Like I do a lot of things to keep my health where it is because my condition, yes, doesn't go away, but I have managed to keep it at a level that is completely manageable through the millions of things I do for myself on the right. regular. And any any time I would step into a fitness journey, I would do too much. I would kick up my inflammation and then I would try and convince myself that fitness wasn't for me. When in reality, I just needed help seeing that it was okay to start small and sustainable. And so- Yeah, you got to pace yourself. I've done two right. marathons and- Yes. They weren't run. They were nope. through White Sands that's Missile okay. Range. They have elevation changes, sand traps. They're through mountains. And our goal was to finish. And, you know, part of that is, you know, I always make the analogy is you don't see the finish line when you start. You just have mm -hmm. to keep putting one foot in front of the other, you know, and change your socks every five miles. Stay hydrated. You have to do all these different things. And it's still going to be difficult and you're still going to be sore. You're still going to get blisters. Yes. But trust the process and what you get from that to know that like me and my best friend did it. We've done it twice. To be able to say you did it and completed it, it's that whole building belief. That That's you can right. do it. And you see Marines or somebody else who drops out at mile 23. Um, all the people who don't make it, who were in quote unquote better shape than you, that you would have figured would have made it. Or could know? have given you the reasons to not do it yourself. Correct. To not even start. To not because even try. Mm-hmm. That right? whole but instead, you thing. did it in the way that was sustainable for you. You didn't overswing. You also knew that it was going to take some grit and there were going to be some crappy parts, but you knew at the end it was going to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That was the whole one of the postings yesterday was, you know, that back and forth with Alan of going, mm -hmm. you know, is it going to be worth it? Should that should that be the first question we even ask before we ask, do, do we believe we can achieve it? Okay. Is it even going to be worth it? Because why would you even start it? But then, you know, like we do, I mean, Alan and I both have master's degrees. We both worked in corporate only to realize it wasn't worth it. It wasn't fulfilling, you know, but it doesn't, does it mean we didn't get any value out of our master's degrees and our corporate experience? Mm -hmm. No, because they were necessary. They were kind yeah. of a necessary part of it. And so sometimes maybe that is it worth it changes within the process. Yeah, you decide you halfway through, well, staying in this isn't worth it anymore. It gives yourself permission to shift if you need to. So many of us get stuck in a situation that we don't feel we can get out of because we don't, one, believe we can, or we don't know that mm -hmm. it's going to be worth it, or we don't believe we're worthy of it. There's very three very powerful pillars there. That's why we focus on it so much at NLU. But there, like we, I can't tell you how many people thought us picking up and moving across the country was the craziest thing they've ever heard because Chris gave up his job. We were moving to a small town. We're going on an adventure. We didn't know what it was going to be like, but people feel stuck. And that really, you know, ruffled their feathers about, well, how could you do that? I, I could never give up this job. I could never leave this town. It's like, well, why? Why not? Why not? I'm more of a why not person. Like there's why people, why do we yeah. got to do this? Why? I'm like, yeah. why not? Like why not? there's a chance, like there's always a chance it could work. There's always a chance this could be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Like, had you not said yes, had mm -hmm. that person not shared that one podcast episode? Yeah. Um, you know, even just... us moving across the country without any kind of connection to NLU yet, per se, I am now all of a sudden in the same time zone from them and a six and a half hour drive to them. I drove to the first, the first time I emceed for them. It was like, oh my God, we're like right there. How was Instead it? of having to fly across what, what the country. What was it like going from uh, hearing them on a podcast to meeting them in person? What was that like? Oh, it's everything you think it would be. Yep. They are, I mean, they're so authentic and they're so integrous and all these things. It's everything you would think they were. They are not disappointing in person at all. They are so wonderful to be around. And I, I love being around people with good energy, but I also love people that I can just sit and have high level conversations yeah. with 
conversations with and that's them to a T you feel very safe you feel very seen it's fun it's it's so great and the only thing I would say is Alan looks younger in person than he does online oh wow you we always joke about how young he looks right he looks right? younger in person <laughs> on the interview I did on the interview I did of him on the uh on one of the clips I put on YouTube it was a short somebody actually commented about they said something about taking advice from a preteen I was like, oh my gosh. He gets it all the time. Uh, the dude's about to be 36. <laughs> I know. But you know what? It's going to serve him in the long run. He's yeah. so dedicated to aging naturally and the best he can. And he picked my brain about it for an hour the other day. He's like, Amy, how can I keep keep this train a rolling? I was like, well, like, you like skincare? Like, what are we talking here? <laughs> hey, next time tell him, uh, start tracking your macros. Yeah, I know he's get a kick out of that. Kevin would love me for that one. But he was, he's like, how can I start? Like, what about my health am I not considering? And I said, okay, this is great because I have a different version of health than he does, right? Their gym, fitness, things. I'm okay. What kind of toxins are you using in your home? What are you using on your body? What are you not using as far as herbs and supplements that you could be like adding in now that you're aging? And so we had that really beautiful conversation and he is so humble to know that he doesn't know everything and picked my brain about it. I love it. It's amazing, I think, and one of the biggest things I've gotten from group co- group coaching is it, it's amazing what being asked the right questions will do for you. Oh. Um, when you get asked the right questions and you choose to investigate that and take a deep dive into it, um, and that's one of the things I love about probably why I'm the most engaged within the NLU community of all the communities I'm in or a part of is because of the questions and they make you Mm -hmm. think. And, you know, sometimes I'll see a post and actually have to pass it by and give it thought because, you know, if I'm going to comment or whatever, even if it's funny, I like it to be intentional or deliberate or have a meaning somehow, some way. Um, but yeah, I love, and I can imagine being around them more within conversation, you get more questions, which yeah. lead to more questions, which makes it s- the engagement factor um, at such a high level and why it's probably, you know, being part of the NLU community or these events is probably really enjoyable. It but is. what do we have in the future for you? What are you looking to do um, cultivate with them more in this? Do you have anything else you're looking to do? Are you pursuing anything professionally? Are you podcast book? What's going yeah. on? So we're, the goal for me right now with NLU is to continue to become the face of holistic self-improvement. And that okay. scares the crap out of me, if I'm being honest, Richard. Uh, but because Kevin is the podcast guy. Yeah, it's going to be Mr. Podcast. So future of NLU is right already. Kevin has his own podcast about podcasting. Mm -hmm. He's creating his own Facebook group. Podcast growth university. That's right. And he's going to eventually have his own group coaching for podcasting. Okay. Alan's going to be the same, but for business, Alan's going to have business growth university podcast. He's going to have his own business group coaching, right? And so we're trying to create this trifecta of holistic self-improvement being the top and then business, right? We're another hey, if, triad. Hey, another if you triad. ever need a Mexican level university, <laughs> I'm your Mexican. <laughs> You're the guy. I will make a mental note of that. I will let you know. You know it. You know it. Uh, And so that is, that's the goal is eventually they're going to have their own group coaching with their own other versions of Amy. mm -hmm. And and I will step in to that space. So, you know, business podcasting, holistic self-improvement. And so that's, you know, I go on podcasts now and I do more, the more forward facing stuff. And, and then outside of that, it's more building the one-on-one coaching from, my own clients through NLU is, is that I just, I love my one-on-one clients so yeah. much. It's, you know, you get to get behind the scenes with someone, really get to know them, get to know their desires and struggles and, and things. And you get to really help them in this Makes beautiful sense of journey it. of self-discovery. We're, we're so dedicated and addicted to self-awareness in this group that it is so powerful to help someone find that for themselves. Yeah. And when you, when you, and that's the other thing about the group, the other people who've been through the coaching and the participants and the, uh, 
a fitness group, it's like, um, that's what, what makes it so easy to stay engaged yeah. because everybody wants the same thing. Everybody's there to improve, but everybody also understands kind of flexibility, grace, setbacks, injuries, that things are going to happen along the way, but, you know, they're still there to give you that word of encouragement to push through, pivot, find a way to still get 1% better, even with a setback. That's Maybe right. the setback might be your superpower. You never know. I agree um, with that. What do you have on the personal level? What are you wanting to gain in family and love and all that outside of your professional NLU life? Yeah, my goal is to, I mean, my health is always a big focus of mine. How can I keep expanding and taking that next 1% improvement in my health? And so I am stepping deeper into decreasing inflammation and building strength. I've started lifting weights, mm -hmm. which is a big deal for me. They're like five pounds from one to five pounds, hey. but it's a start. If I would have helps, never been helps. able to do that. That's right. I would have never been able to do that before. And so my goal is to continue to build strength. That's a big one for me is to mm -hmm. be strong and um, so expand in my health that way. I mean, Chris, my husband is going through his own growth journey right now. And so that's going to expand our marriage. And I just, I'm so excited to be there for him on his self-discovery yeah. journey, him learning about his core limiting belief and like all of these things. It's so powerful. So that's only going to help our marriage and our family life and our children more. And so it is, it's just this holistic expansion constantly, quality of life, health, wealth, and love. How can we just keep taking 1% improvements in each one? Sounds like a perfect place to uh, end the interview, but yeah, I would encourage anyone who's listening, um, especially if you made it this far, mm -hmm. go check out NLU, um, the podcast. I would say check out the Facebook group. It's uh, free. Yeah, We're Next in there Level every Nation. Day. And, you know, there's a there's a fitness accountability group. There are so many things I think if you just visit engage you somebody within the group somewhere be it alan amy kevin or another member will point you to the right direction that's kind of what happened to me um and i would highly recommend um group coaching i've gotten a ton out of it just by being asked the right questions and i've started i'm about to have my second session um on tuesday with business coaching with alan nice um also highly recommended but if you want to go ahead and uh, give out the discount code that people can use for group coaching. I would be happy to. If you are interested in group coaching, of course, reach out and we can answer any questions you have. But I have a code for you. It's just NLU listener, NLU listener, all lowercase. And it brings it down to less than $25 a week. And you get us for nine sessions. What? No, it's 12 sessions. Yeah. I was going to say something else, but it's 12 sessions, six with Kevin Allen and myself, and then six with just me. And we go through just layers and layers of self-discovery, your version of success, self-belief, self-worth, core values, health, wealth, life, and love for sure. And uh, yeah, we would love to have you. I'll put it to you this way. This is how enjoyable it was. I'm sad that it's ending. Oh, me too. You know, because it was one I of always those things. That I look back and I go, ending. I go, man, it was in the summer. I remember having a call when I was in South Padre. Yeah. And I'm like, has it been that long? And I'm like, it's so sad. You know, the people in the group, the engagement. Um, yeah, it's certainly worth it. I I highly valued it and you will get something out of it. So shameless plug. I'm happy to plug in all you because I got so much out of it and it's been such a value to me. And I'm sure the people around me see it as well. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we love and appreciate you in the community. So thank you. Well, thank you. I am going to go be dad and husband and focus on some of the other areas of my life. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and weekend. Thank you. Thank and, you. I'm uh, actually off to NLU book club after this. Awesome. We have a free I, book club every week. <laughs> yes. I might actually join too, because I got the book this time and I'm reading. So I will let you go so we can hop off in there. All right. Okay. Thank you so See much. You. I appreciate this. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, go out and be the person that you want to meet.
Let's go.